are right now and working to restore energy as soon as possible. Where do you see the exits in Ward 3, 4, 12? We're looking at approximately Ward 16. Uh, right now, um, I live in Etobicoke. We don't have any power. All when I was driving in um, right now, it seemed like it got better as we got closer downtown. Um, it doesn't seem like the downtown area around here is affected that much. The whole city is affected, but not that much. I would say the corridor, the 401, if you're looking up here, there's the 401 north and south of the 401 has been hit hard. Basically, the area is with a lot of trees. The ice gets on the trees. They break the power lines. You said we're not receiving emergency yet. What, no. What could put us there? Um, I think uh, the deputy manager, um, John Levy, could explain that better. If it gets really bad in the next 24 hours, we could have a state of emergency. But I don't want to say that right now. We're not in that situation quite yet. How are people going to get to some of these community centers? Some of them were saying that they're in high floors where their elevators are out. They can't get down and they don't have money for cabs either. So how do they get there? Are there shuttles or? This is a challenge. There's, um, I talked about Purvis, Tr uh, 20 Toronto community housing buildings have no power. So we're dealing with thousands of residents right now. Um, the people that have power really have to reach out to the people that don't. Um, if you know friends in areas, again, um, don't want, <laughs> we're sort of stuck in between. We don't want people to drive, but yet we need people to help other people out. Um, the TTC is up and running. We encourage people to use the TTC, except for the streetcars. Um, if you have to use a cab, use a cab. Uh, we have the community centers open. Um, and, and, and we have to uh, make sure there's enough food and water to get through. Hopefully, it, it won't be a crisis um, for the next three days. We're looking at at least 72 hours now. If the storm gets worse, we, we can't put a number on how many hours it's gonna take to restore the energy and the hydro to everybody uh, across the city. Are there city people going through the, are CTA officials going through and checking out people in those buildings? Bud Purvis told me that they're monitoring those 20 buildings as closely as possible. He says they're scattered basically throughout the city. And again, I just got off the phone from Bud Purvis. He's doing everything in his power to make sure that people have enough food. Uh, they're obviously the most vulnerable right now uh, next to the hospitals and, and the pumping stations. Uh, please, if you know someone in those um, that lives in Toronto Community Housing without power, Try somehow to get to them um, safely and um, you know, uh, share some food, uh, donate whatever you have. Um, we just want to warn people about candles. Candles uh, can turn dangerous. If you have Christmas lights, everybody has Christmas lights, turn them off. We don't need the Christmas lights for one day. It won't hurt us. Um, and just be careful of uh, heaters, floor heaters are another thing. I know it's cold. My house is freezing cold. I have little kids. Um, we might have to go to a hotel tonight. I'm not quite sure what we're going to do, but it's not good to wake up and have a freezing cold shower. And um, we have to manage, and uh, we have to help each other out. The city has to come together and help each other out. What How about the water plant? You mentioned the hospital thing about the water Blue. plant. Blue. Blue uh, Geronimo. Uh, Three of our four water treatment plants in production. The most eastern plant, the Harbor plant, has been out of uh, hydro service now since probably since after midnight. Uh, we are working close to the impacts at this point in time. The system uh, is designed to run on our reservoirs, so there's sufficient water out in the system, and you won't notice it for, for quite some time. We can we can ride on the city within a, within a day or two, with, with, uh, and, and that should give us time to work with hydro to get our critical pumping stations back up. So uh, people probably aren't noticing that many problems with water. Uh, you might if you are in a high rise, if you are uh, in, the, in the tall building, that relies on booster pumps, and that building is uh, out of hydro and does not have a backup generator. You might be out of water then. And that's related to uh, the private pump and plumbing system within that building. Are you Those concerned about water main breaks? At the present time, uh, we haven't seen uh, a rash of water main breaks. Uh, we have always a couple on the go, but uh, we have not seen an increase, so we're okay right now with respect to water main breaks and any issues we have with sewers as well. What about the, the, the website? The 311 website was down earlier today, Also, uh, I mean the 311 system, as well as the website. Right. What are you going to do in terms of trying to get information out to people if there's changes or whatnot? And, and also, and what are the priorities that, well, why should people be calling 311? Are there priorities that you want to hear from and then others to just hold back? Well, uh, just developing a story. And right now, uh, the treatment, 
the, uh, the uh, challenges that the outreach uh, placed in the emergency services of the city of Toronto, there are over 200 people working as I speak to restore that system. Uh, the feeling is that uh, the email system will be, uh, should be in place by now, and that by 3 p.m., uh, the website, Blackberry 311, should be restored completely. But here's the complication. Uh, when you turn the system off, uh, the way it should be turned off, it's easy to turn it back on and get an immediate response. However, uh, given the situation that uh, developed with that unchecked sudden loss of power, uh, there would be a few caveats that uh, there may be some problems. But if there are, uh, we certainly have enough people working on them to restore them as quickly as possible. But at least by 3 o'clock this afternoon, the system should be fully operational. So to, not to overload the 311 system, but then how, who do you want, or what kinds of emergencies, or what kinds of reports do you want to hear from, from citizens first? Well, the, uh, the, the email system is uh, very important. As I said, that should be there now. Uh, but 311 should be restored uh, uh, by at least uh, 3 o'clock this afternoon. Well, the, um, the, what you have in front of you are three people working together uh, on this matter. Uh, and uh, we're working in cooperation with each other. However, Deputy, Deputy Mayor, are you, are you the final voice on decisions that need to be made? So uh, just to clarify two things. First, three one one has been working. We didn't have all our support systems, but we had the system call, and it's uh, we now supported by, by the system. Uh, we have an emergency operations center. It's a staff-driven center that's trained and, uh, and able to respond to emergencies. We op operationalized it yesterday at 11 o'clock in anticipation that we'd have an emergency today, and uh, we're going to be doing that. So we keep the staff up. Uh, we keep the mayor and the deputy mayor informed. Can I ask about the trees, the down trees? Are how many tree guys do you guys do you have out working on clearing those? Yeah. I think Anthony Haynes can answer that because they're affecting the hydro lines. Sorry, the question was how many? Uh, I can tell you it's all of our forestry folks are out right now, uh, and, uh, and coordinating along with the city people. The issue with the trees is they've already fallen, and so it's mainly a cleanup and get them out of the way so our crews can actually restore the lines that are.
and is the situation uh, worse or better than you thought it might be at, at first glance? Well, I can tell you that I was out this morning assessing it firsthand and uh, down quite a deep in the register of the amount of damage. I was personally was up in the east side area, and as we were trying to uh, assess it there, trees were falling down around us. It's a factor there, and it's quite a harrowing experience having you know you have a loud snap and, and, a, and a large tree would fall around your feet, and that just goes to show that the damage is still being done. Uh, the damage that was done overnight has not stopped yet. And So the estimate earlier was that it was going to be it could be up to three days before all power is all restored. Do you think it's actually could be, could it be longer? Yeah, and my real caution about that is that's based on some very very preliminary information. If you can imagine right now, our first priority is to make it safe, as the mayor has indicated, and so our our employees are attending sites where the police and fire may be to ensure that the power is off on lines and laying on the ground. That's our first priority. And then the second is to bring on the major and important loads that support our city. such preliminary numbers. What I can tell you is we will not rest until 6 9 We're working around the clock to make sure that the repairs are made and customers are brought back on as soon as possible. Are hospitals running on backup generators right now? Are there emergency rooms open? My understanding, I'm not an expert in this area, my understanding is that the hospitals have put uh, communication out regarding uh, their operational status so that they, uh, you know, their patients are, are applying and are being taken care of, that the hospital generating systems are supporting the hospital's needs at this time. So uh, while they appear stable, I think it's uh, we, everybody would agree is our first priority is bringing those uh, customers back up with permanent uh, supplies. Is there anywhere we could speak to Andy Byford from the Chief of Staff? The lack of power at those locations. Uh, the Broadland Port Line, again, is running, uh, except for a short section between Victoria Park and Morden. There is no service on the Shepherd Line, uh, and we are running a bus shuttle bicycle Shepherd. There is no service on the SRB to cover a rapid transit, and again, we're running a bus shuttle by such service. Bus services generally are running, um, albeit we've had to thin some of the uh, routes out in order to provide the emergency bus shuttles. Uh, the biggest challenge we have, and this is ongoing, is with the streetcar lines where the uh, copper wire that provides the power has such thick ice on it that even though last night we deployed what are called um, cutters and sliders, uh, they're, they're devices which you fit to the poles, the trolley poles of the streetcars, they just could not get through the ice is that thick. So um, our strategy has been to, to focus uh, particularly, provide particular focus on keeping the subway going and on keeping a, an alternative bus service going. Uh, and as and when the weather warms up and we can get the ice broken off the streetcar wires, then we will do that. Um, my latest uh, information is the bus shuttles are running well. Uh, we do say to customers, please be careful getting on and off vehicles because obviously you've got to be careful when you step down onto the sidewalk. Uh, do be careful. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the fantastic work of my staff out there. It's, it's difficult conditions. Uh, the staff particularly trying to get the overhead clear. Um, it's pretty horrendous what they're, what they're doing, but we've got all hands to the pump. Uh, we've fired up uh, our transit control centre. It's, um, it's, uh, has additional staff in it to make sure that we're, we're uh, getting the services back up and running as quickly as possible. How much are you concerned are the winds with the streetcar cables? Um, that, that will be a challenge for us. I mean, if, uh, if, we can, if the temperature warms up, then the ice will start to melt on the copper wire, and at which point we can uh, get the streetcar, what's called storm cars, running up and down the streetcar track to, to then try to keep them clear, but obviously wind will be a challenge for us. So um, increasingly, as the afternoon wears on, our focus will turn to trying to make sure we have a good start up tomorrow when obviously people are back at work. 
uh, if we can keep the buses going and keep the subway going, and at the moment that is working, uh, then we'll be fine. The one uh, thing we're also keeping a very close eye on is making sure we get fuel deliveries to our bus uh, garages uh, to make sure that we can fuel the buses, uh, but also keep the power on the bus uh, garages so that the fuel pumps will work. Well, I mean, they're designed uh, to cope with wind, but obviously the fact that they fly sort of makes them more vulnerable. Uh, it's same as what our colleagues were saying, uh, Anthony in particular, if a wire were to come down, you should treat it as light, you should not go anywhere near them. For the commute tomorrow, what can they dictate uh, the time of the people are going to work? Well, my best advice is that uh, customers should keep an eye on our website, www.ptc.ca. Uh, we also have our e alert service up and running. Uh, we're pumping out information on the subway uh, and on the uh, surface networks. So do keep an eye on the website. Well, our aim is to get everything up and running tomorrow morning. I think the biggest challenge will still be the streetcar network. Do you think the streetcar network will be up tomorrow then? Uh, at the moment, uh, it looks hard to say. If the weather gets worse and the, the melt doesn't happen on the copper wire, then uh, I think there's a real chance that the streetcars won't be up and running. Uh, if that does happen, then we will continue to run a bus service by some streetcars. And what I should say is there will be longer waits than usual because in order to provide shuttles for all of the streetcars, we have to take buses off other routes. Can we ask the Deputy Mayor, would you advise? Yeah. It's, up, it's, up uh, it's, it's up to the employees. I also it's up have to the employees. I have another quick question about the community centers. I just got a phone call from Councillor Maria Audrey and she says the Northwood Community Center does not have power and they're changing it to the Driftwood Center, but they're also concerned that there are no community centers available to help people necessarily in East York or the east end of the city. Is, are you looking to create more of these centers uh, to help people out in that part of town that don't have power? But the, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, I was trying to just jump in and announce that Northwood Community Center has lost its power. We shifted to Driftwood, which is at 4401 James Street. Yes, we we'll continue to expand the uh, facilities that we'll make available to the public and we'll be updating you as we go. I just did say that the website is up until that is not. It's expected to come up in the next hour or so. So we'll just try to update there and uh, just for ready to wrap up. Uh, I have another question just about the community centers. Are they full or what are your, like, and, and, are, are, and is, are there enough of them open at this time? And again, I said we've gone through the initial, this initial list. We'll be expanding the list as the needs of demand will be monitoring the situation. Some may come off, some may go out. Uh, we think we have enough capacity now to deal with the initial push. Are they open 24 hours? Yes. There's one clarification before we that should be. 
they get their work done. Uh, we're always in reverse to the uh, You may recall last year when Hurricane Sandy came through, we thought Hydro was able to restore the quicker. We had sent a huge volume of, of our people down to help in New York, and they uh, too are available to help us as well as Chicago. And so over the coming hours, we'll be making assessments as to whether we call out uh, for that help. But as, as you would expect, it takes a number of days to get those uh, types of organizations to get people into the Toronto area. So we're hoping that we'll be able to 